All right. I think we should be live now in Facebook. Yep. Perfect. All right. Well, welcome everyone to Next Level by Association. And um, hopefully you guys had a great weekend and you're ready for the new week. This week, uh, we have a, a, a guest of honor that is a friend of mine who's been a member of Next Level by Association, who has, um, uh, you know, we, we got connected um, via another personal friend. And they, uh, they introduced us and they said, you guys should meet. And so she and I got together for coffee. I can remember we met over at Woody's in Newport Beach uh, and had just a great conversation. And then it, that's been, I don't know, probably three, three and a half, four years, maybe, maybe even more. Um, and I've always been impressed by this lady because of her story, but also because of how she's handled things. I mean, she's She's been open and transparent about what some of the things that have happened in her life. And she's also been um, willing to share the difficult parts of her life in order to help others. And uh, so it's, it's a lot of fun to have her on here today. So AJ, how are you today? I'm fabulous. Thank you, Rob. How like are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. I like the hat. And what, what, is, what is, I'm always curious about what's in people's background. What's in your background? This is, I'm at my shop. I have a perfumery and these are my oils that I create a uh, perfume with. Wow, very cool. These, so, are called, these are called flacones. Flacon? And I set up like an old apothecary and these are flacones. And then I have this oil in here. This one's plumeria. Huh? And, um, and it's kind of like a chemistry lab. And <laughs> I always like to make people happy and smelling good is like a happy thing. So voila. That's I what like I that. I like, now where's your, where's your shop so people can follow you? Laguna Beach. Okay. And I'm on PCH in Pano Plaza, right near downtown. I'm in the downtown area. So. Okay. And Laguna what's, Beach. what's a website people can follow, uh, go to? It's the fragrance boutique. So it's tfblagunabeach.com. Okay. Awesome. Well, um, let's get this, this, this started because you and I have something in common in our, in our life um, that is something that uh, we would wish upon no one, but we've both lost children. That's correct. Can, um, and I remember when we first talked about it, how, um, how it made an impact on me about how it happened for you and how you're dealing with that. <clears throat> Can you kind of share and, and what happened, how old, uh, how old and, and how long ago that was? Yes. Um, 10 years ago, it was 10 years in October. My son was 25. Um, and uh, he had been in Afghanistan in the army so when he returned from there, I thought he was invincible. Um, I remember I told him while he was in Afghanistan that he was aging me while he was there because I started getting carded <laughs> for when I go to buy alcohol, <laughs> buy a bottle of wine, which I always, I hadn't before. And we teased each other. But when he came back, I was so relieved and really thought he was invincible. And he was going to college on his GI Bill and he started a business and his passion, which was building race cars. And he, so he had a shop and he was working on fast engines and rebuilding vehicles, Mustangs, especially he loved it. And he actually was a drag car racer and had his own drag car. And um, uh, all of his cars though were, he had five Mustangs and an old pickup and, and, and they were all gas guzzlers. And he said, uh, Mom, will you co-sign for me a motorcycle? And I said, no way. <laughs> Those things are dangerous. And he says, I'm a good driver. Yes, you are, but uh, not everybody else is. So anyway, long story short, he um, got it on his own. He's like me. He'll find a way when he wants something. So he got it on his own. And uh, one day he was harassed the fourth time by this guy, this jerk that... Um, just thought it was funny to harass motorcycle riders and it ended up not being pretty and it ended up in an accident. 
my son was in the hospital and he had a lot of injuries. None of them should have been fatal. And 25 days in, he was healing. He was doing so well. And a nurse decided he was too fidgety and he OD'd him on propofol and it killed him. And so it's kind of like, which one killed him? You know, the accident, the stupid motorcycle, I don't know. But uh, it's still, <clears throat> as you can tell, very hurtful, but I still scratch my head and go, wow, you know, if this wouldn't have happened, if that wouldn't have happened, the whole thing is just a domino effect that just ended in, in death. And Bob, as you know, um, is permanent. It can never be fixed. A lot of things in life can be fixed or reprimanded or, or made right or just, you know, handled and then death you it's can't you can't go back it's it's never fixable you can't undo it and um, it's permanent and so you get up every day and you just do it you just get up and you give it your best and if you had a bad day that's okay because you can the next day have a better day mm -hmm. or the next day do something that'll make your day brighter by maybe making someone else's day brighter. Or you can go in with um, uh, an attitude of, okay, today I'm gonna help someone else to get my mind off of my problem. Mm -hmm. and, and every day you can, you can step up. Mm -hmm. And some days that in the 10 years, as you probably had um, suffered, was you get up out of bed and then you just kind of get back in bed and go, I can't today. Yeah. Yeah. That has happened. Yeah. But you know what? It's been over a year now since I did that. Uh, every day for the last year and two months, I have got up and fulfilled the day. Now, maybe I wasn't too productive during the day, but I got up. <laughs> And I didn't go back to bed and I did what I had to do to, to continue on. And one of the reasons I do that is for uh, my other three children and my granddaughter that my son, uh, she was two when um, her dad, my son uh, passed. And so she's now 12. And so I get up for her as well. And I know, Bob, you have other children and grandchildren too that are just amazingly beautiful. So you know what that is and that keeps you going. Absolutely. Yeah. AJ, um, man, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, like you say, you know, we all experience things and we experience things differently. Um, and yet the loss of a child is experienced so universally, um, you know, and, and it doesn't matter how old they are. I mean, whether they're three or they're newborn, brand new born or, uh, or, you know, 50, it, it, yeah. it's, it's a unique, unique yeah. thing. Um, I have, I've always wondered how, um, how that affected you from the standpoint of looking and saying, what do I do now? I mean, when, when my daughter died, everyone kept saying to me, well, Bob, what are you going to do now? I mean, how are you going to, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I kept thinking, what are my options? I mean, I got an option to lay down and die, or I got an option to live. What are my options? I'm going to, obviously I'm going to choose to live, but now, well, what does that look like? What did that look like for you when you obviously chose to, to go forward? What did that look like for you? What it looked like for me was one is to dig into not letting what happened to my son happen to anyone else. Mm. So what can I do? Other people, they're going to get motorcycles. They're going to have a conflict with someone. But the hospital, um, and of course, everybody says, oh, didn't you sue them? Didn't you do this? Didn't you do that? Ugh. You know, there's a long story behind all that, but but the two things that came out of it was one, I was on a committee. This was in the state of Texas. In the state of Texas, uh, if your child is, um, or anyone is, uh, doesn't make it out of a hospital and it was then there, it was at their fault, you can sue, but to sue, it costs over $300,000 for a specialist to come in and testify that it was malicious intent. It has to be malicious intent. And, and there wasn't malicious intent. Yeah. They also uh, 
can award you the, the max award, which was $250,000. So you're $50,000 in just right off the bat without lawyer fees. So I was on a committee that we tried to change that a little bit. We're not trying to go after hospitals for mistakes. Malicious intent, we see that. But also like, where's the responsibility here? This nurse just didn't want my son to be fidgeting around because he'd been 25 days in the bed. He was wanting to get up. Sure. So where does it lie that you can't just uh, put him to sleep with too much um, sedative mm -hmm. to, so that you don't have to put up with his fidgety? Where, do, where does this go? And so the laws have changed a little bit in Texas and um, the max amount award is now a little more and you can at least cover your costs to at least smack the hand of the people and, and to also show them be a little more responsible. And also I wrote enough letters to the uh, UMC that uh, my son was in and they lowered their max amount of propofol that they are allowed to give a patient period. Mm -hmm. And I found this out um, because the universe wanted me to know that this happened. I was on an airplane and I was sitting next to this lady and a young young nurse and she said oh i'm i'm a nurse what do you do and i said oh so and so and we get to talking and long story short she is the nurse that works in that unit and she said to me oh my god you're tristan's mom mm -hmm. and i said okay tell me how you know and she said well uh off the record because of tristan and your letters we are not allowed to give a certain amount of propofol anymore. And I said, woohoo, victory. I said, thank you for telling me that because I never got a notice telling me that that happened. But again, like I said, the universe wanted me to know that my efforts did something. And the other thing uh, that started here recently is this, let me show you. Um, so when a business partner of mine started this, uh, he just sent me this poster. Sorry, I'm very shaky. This is, this is a subject that you know, you know, Bob, it's kind of like, ooh, did we talk about this? Anyhow, it's, so it's a um, scholarship fund in memory of my son. So it has, this was him and his daughter, him and on the army. This is actually my four children when he graduated boot camp. So my daughter who's 20 now, and my son who's uh, almost 18 now, and then my uh, second son who's now my oldest and he's 32. And then it shows a family picture and what have you. And then it shows some pictures of his funeral. He was buried in, with honors. And it also says here, he rests beside his great friend, Jerry Toder Deaver, who tragically lost his life five years prior to Tristan. Another great friend, Derek Schilling, Schilling is in possession of Tristan's favorite drag car, taking very good care of it and racing it in Tristan's honor every season. And Tristan's daughter, Cheyenne, refers to her father as her hero and places flowers at his grave. Mm -hmm. And then it noted, Tristan touched many lives in his 25 years on earth and is dearly missed by his parents and younger siblings, Matthew, Mira, Joy, and Zachary. So that's what you do. You go on in their honor and you try to, if you can, keep it from happening to anyone else. Because mm -hmm. as you know, Bob, you don't wish this on your worst enemy. Yeah. I had a friend who told me when he saw me the first time after Tristan's funeral, he said, I just, I haven't said anything to you because I just don't know what to say. And I said to him, that's the best thing anybody has said to me. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and I told him, I said, he goes, well, I just don't know how you feel. And I said, I don't want you to know how I feel. So don't even go there. Just, okay. just know that you telling me you don't know what to say is the best thing that can be said. It means a lot. That goes really deep for some weird reason. And not even two years later, I was at his son's funeral. And he saw me was strong at the funeral and talking and shaking everybody's hand and everything. And he saw me and he knew, I know you're faking. I know, I know what you're doing. I know you're just getting by. And he just collapsed on me mm. and just bawled and bawled and bawled because he knew I know. And you can't fake it with me. So we stay in touch every now and then. Hey, how you doing? And you know, uh, I, I would be remiss to not um, tell you thank you for your son's service. If he was here, I would tell him obviously. So thank but, you. Um, but um, thank you for sharing that that those stories because those are insights that people don't would not know about just by knowing that you lost a son. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, 
people need to hear more about that because I think the ripple effect that we have because of our story, not because of who we are, what we did or anything, but because of our story, that, that effect, like you said, he saw you and he, and all the charade was gone. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the magical things that we, you were allowing him to heal in a way that nobody else could allow him to heal. Right. And I just think that's so magical and, and so powerful that you were able to do that for him. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just crazy that um, the people, you know, the, the questions and the thoughts that people think that are going to be help us um, like, you know, tell us, oh, well, you know, he's in a better place now and all these other things just drove me nuts. The number one question I had when my daughter died was, well, was she in a car seat? You told me that that's horrible. I'm like, that yes but what the hell does that matter are you talking I'm, i'd lot i would lose it after about the 10th time i was like just shut this down and i but i you know you and i both know all they're trying to do is figure out something that they can say or some way to make sense for them and you know one of the next level pillars is stop trying to make sense of a senseless behavior yeah. or a senseless action or a senseless you know thought um things that happen how did you make sense of it for you? Because you and I both know that you go through it and you're dealing with it. And then all of a sudden one day, it's just like, it's all over again and nothing happened, but it's like, it just happens. It feels like it just happened right then again. How did you make sense of that for you? I still don't, I still don't make sense of it. I, um, thank you. I, I, I have to forgive myself almost daily because I feel like I could have done something more. I was up there arguing with the doctors and the nurses every day, <laughs> but did I, did I do enough? Um, one day my mom, my, my daughter, so she was 10 at the time, uh, I was getting ready to go to the hospital and uh, she said, Mom, you go to the hospital all the time. You're there, you're gone a lot. And I looked at her and I said, sweetie, if it was you in that hospital, I would be there all the time too. And she just went, oh, okay. So she kind of, she understood. Um, fortunately, I had a nanny, a live-in nanny at the time and an assistant and together we, uh, cause I had a 10 year old and a seven year old at home and I was at the hospital uh, three times a day for two to three hours each time for each visit and so together we all you know we're taking care of the little ones and I just kept telling them he's getting better he's getting better he's getting better you'll see him soon because they kept wanting to see him but he was still in the surgical ICU so the little ones couldn't go in and then one day um when they woke up that morning um they were sent into my room and I was in my sitting area and they just each sat on each side of me and I just let them know that I'm sorry, I really thought he was gonna come home. He should have, but he's not going to. And they were just so mad. Like they hadn't seen him in a month. And and it was, and there was no making sense of it then and there's no making sense of it now. And so what you have to do is you have to live anyway. Mm. And you have to find your reason. And again, I said, my reasons are my other three children and my granddaughter. <clears throat> So those are my reasons. And those are some strong reasons. And I don't mean to be morbid, but to be honest with you, I think if it weren't for those, my, those three kids, other kids of mine, I probably wouldn't be here anymore. And I don't mean to be morbid, but no, I totally get it. I do feel that way sometimes. Like I would have checked out a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but I have those reasons to live and we all need a reason to live. We all need a, a mission, a purpose. And what makes you fulfilled inside because you can't make sense of stuff so you find something that balances that so here you have this horrible thing that happened I don't even know what to call it besides an incident right. um uh, a tragedy yes okay so then how do I balance it and my way of balancing it is um my deep seated need to be a humanitarian. And so 
Um, one thing that you might not know, Bob, is that I help support a, a school, an orphanage, with a school of 250 kids. And I do what I can. And we have a nonprofit, and it's called Wings for Crossover. And um, we're developing a new website for it. But it it all all it, it does is is uh, takes donations and, and has fundraisers to uh, support these 250 orphans. Um, and it's in Ghana, wow. Africa. And uh, and uh, when I get the pictures every now and then, I get new pictures of the kids or a new kid. Sometimes kids are dropped off. Sometimes they're rescued from being uh, slaves and mm -hmm. different things like this. So I see the new kid, and I and sometimes we get to name the new kid and. We haven't named one after Tristan yet. I just can't go there yet, but yeah, we're kind of looking at maybe, maybe that'll happen. Really? Uh, anyhow, things like this. And those are, those are, to me, it's a little small thing, but man, is it huge impact on these 250 kids. Like they're just uh, innocent souls. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, uh, you know, I do what I can to just kind of spread love and cheer around even my boutique on the, on the top unit of our, of our plaza. It's all uh, stores downstairs and on the top it's apartments. And I'm always real nice to the tenants and everything. And one lady used to kind of like dodge me. So one day I told her, I said, I'm from Texas. I'm just friendly. I'm not trying to get you to come in and buy anything. <laughs> and she goes, oh, okay, thanks. And now we're good friends. <laughs> so you just find your balance, because here is tragedy and things that just don't make sense. Yep. And here is your balance. Mm. And if you don't constantly feed this, you're gonna get like this and you're gonna get off balance. And you well just said. gotta stay as much as you can right here. Well said. So your life started, uh, Let's talk about that because I never heard that story before. I was like, what? <laughs> Tell me about that. That was wild. Well, apparently my natural mother, her name is Sally, and um, she worked in a restaurant and the manager um, always said to her, you don't want that baby, I'll take her. If you don't want that baby, I'll take her because apparently Sally didn't have the, the capacity to take very good care of me. And... Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so I was about four or five months old and sure enough she dropped me on the doorstep of that manager and um, and and that lady wonderful lady became my mother and her and her husband adopted me and uh, uh, the story goes is that my dad uh, that adopted me uh, he um, he worked in this uh, he was a taxi driver so he was in the taxi place and my mom kind of pulled up after taking me or uh, having a meeting with the lawyers and it looked like, yes, they were going to be able to adopt me. And she pulled up and she stuck me up like, like a puppy and said, can we keep her? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, we can keep her. And everybody was like, looking like, what? What is this a baby, not a puppy? Like, <laughs> but it's a cute story. I love it. And, um, and so I uh, had a lot of um, issues. Uh, I didn't, but apparently didn't bond. And so um and by the time mom and the family got me, I have older sisters and brother, uh, by the time they got me, uh, they would try to hold me and I would push and squirm and kick and uh, 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 and they said they'd lay me down and I would just rock myself and just be happy as a lark. So they're like, okay, well, as long as she's okay. <laughs> and um, uh, unfortunately, uh, some bad events happened and my mom had uh, divorced and remarried and I had a mean stepdaddy and we can just put it that way. And uh, uh, when I was very young, but then she remarried again into a man who, uh, he was rough and gruff, but m he never touched me, never, ever, and he, he was my protector, my guardian for the rest of my growing up years mm -hmm. from five until 18 when I went on to college, and, uh, and he uh, became my, you know, my dad to me, and, uh, and he taught me a lot because I was like his only son. <laughs> yeah, it was me and my sister growing up in the household there because my older sister and brother were already off on, on, in their lives. And um, uh, he, he was very mechanical and could fix anything and do anything and run his own business. And he just would show me things all the time and teach me. And I really um, 
give him a lot of homage for the fact that I am so independent and that I'll find a way. He always showed me, find a way, do it. And if it's worth doing, do it right. You know, I'm sure everybody else being raised, you heard that. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. <laughs> and don't half-ass it. Can I say that? <laughs> Tell me those kind of things. And so I always try to take that into consideration when I do something. And like when I bought this business, it's like, go in and, 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 and give it your all and, uh, and, and um, elevate and, and create and become, you know, when this shop had been here 18 years when I had purchased it, but then yet it wasn't doing much. And mm -hmm. so I was like, how can I get it out there? How can I become bigger? How can I um, make this something um, fun and, and not only fun, but also pay the bills, you know, be my job. And because I really feel like if you're in a job that you don't love, then you, you're, in a, you're in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you can get depressed and, and feel like you have no mission. And as I said before, got to have your mission, got to have your reasons. Yeah. Wow. So now how has, how has the COVID and everything else, how has that affected your business? Because um, I see, you know, you always have this great positive outlook and everything. So, but I also, but I also see you share on those days when you're hurting and, um, and, you know, that's one of the things I love and have loved about you since, you know, since early on um, because you have both sides, you share both sides. It's not like you have this great face all the time. It's just happy, 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 which a lot of people do, but you also share those days. Uh, you know, how has COVID affected your business right now? And then what have you done and what have you learned in this last year, 12, 12 13, 14 months? Well, COVID absolutely it plays a factor because there's not as many shoppers around. And, uh, and knowing that going in though, uh, I, I, we created the website and we are uh, working on, it's pretty raw. So we're working on, you know, improving it and, and um, getting it up to par, uh, to par as far as what we want. But I, I feel like, you know, what do I do when I want something or need something? I, I shop online and have it delivered. Um, so that's, that's what I did is started the uh, website and get it going and do some promotions and, mm -hmm. And, uh, and get with people. I actually um, got with a, a, I met with a gentleman who has a, talk about COVID hurting someone. He has these functions and of course the functions got shut down. The function room got shut down. He used to have these events. And so uh, he started doing things himself to, 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 um, be ready for an explosion for when you know things are are, are the new normal is here and right. or the uh, vaccination has gotten around enough for however you want to word it and so what we did we got together and I created a perfume for him and he does a lot of, of events for women and so he uh, had this perfume and so we were going to sell uh, his uh, um, at least a hundred bottles at his function in January. Well, you know, as everyone knows, COVID re-shut down or however you want to word it. Uh, if people are asked to stay home. So of course these functions aren't happening. So what we did is we went, we put it on the website and we sent out a bunch of samples to people and said, hey, sample this. And, mm. and this is our introductory press. And we just do whatever it takes to get, uh, to keep some, the money, the cash flow going and to uh, pay the bills and, and do what you have to do. Of course, um, uh, shop is still open during the day and, uh, and um, it's a small little shop so I can only have like one person or, or two people if they're together at a time to take their mask, smell the stuff, you know, things, things like this. So we got to constantly just deodorize and disinfect and that kind of thing and just stay on top of it. And yeah. Uh, but we we are open, um, but the the we're open for almost no <laughs> one. You know the the business is slow, and you know I'm in a Laguna Beach, so it's a, kind of a vacation town, and so winter is going to be slower anyway. Yeah. So kind of prepare for that, and just don't make any um, rash decisions, and just keep on keeping on, and keep thinking how can I. Um, 
uh, continue the momentum of keeping the business going. And uh, that's that's all I can say is, is you just yeah. got to um, keep open minded to new ideas and and working with other people and partnering up. A lot of times partnering up with someone that way you work off each other yeah. and that kind of thing. So, so that's what, where we're what at. What does it take to, to create a unique um, uh, aroma for an individual? I mean, because what do you take into consideration to do that? Well, first of all, uh, I love, that's my favorite part about this business yeah. is whenever I have a, uh, an appointment and a session with someone that's going to create their own perfume, whether they just want it for themselves or whether they're going to market it and sell it. Uh, they come in and I just start talking to them. And I know this sounds cuckoo, but the oils <laughs> speak to me and they talk to me and I talk to the individual and I just tell them, start talking, start talking to me. Tell me what you like. Tell me your hobbies. Tell me what you do. And I start putting aromas in front of them. And when I see their body reaction, when I see them go, hmm, mm. you know, then I know. And when I see them go, hmm, that's, that's interesting. And I'll go, well, let's set this one to the side and come back to it if it's interesting. If it's a no, it's a no. I always tell them if it's a no, just say no. And you don't got to explain it. The no's no's, right? Right, right. yeah. <laughs> so I just, their body uh, reaction and their facial reaction and, and what have you. And then whenever I get some fragrances that they really like, I just... Um, because of being a perfumer and knowing what goes with what and, and what can balance out something and this and that, I start pulling down other uh, oils to create uh, their signature scent. And mm -hmm. it can be uh, four ingredients, but normally it's more like 10, it can be up to 22 ingredients. Really? Oh, yeah, it, it can get very complex. Uh -huh. um, and so when someone is open to it though, and so what I do is I just start on testing strips and start putting oils together and setting these testing strips in front of them. And they just start sniffing and then they start eliminating some. And I just keep going down with what I wrote. And usually by, usually by seven test strips, they're like, oh, I have two that are my favorite. So then we test it on their skin. So it mixes with their body chemistry and see how it smells on them. Then we adapt to, okay, a little more this, a little less this, or add this or add that. And then in the end, we get the result that they want and the fragrance that makes them super happy. And that's exactly the goal is what do, or makes you happy. And because um, fragrance can bring uh, memory, jog memories. Like I have people come in and they smell something, they go, oh, that smells like my dad. I'm like, well, that's a good memory, but it's not for you. Because <laughs> you don't want to constantly think of your dad when you're smelling yeah. Uh, your cologne or your mom when you're smelling your perfume. Okay, uh, wait, you just brought up a great point because I, that's what I was thinking. You kept saying perfume, perfume, perfume. But what's the difference between cologne and perfume and can they interchange? Okay, cologne is just watered down perfume. It's all perfume oil to begin with. Okay. And what happens is, um, I, I call it mainstream or department store perfumes. Uh, if you how it depends on how watered down it is and when I say watered down I mean with alcohol and other uh, chemicals the preservatives and this have you um, and if it's 20 percent perfume oil um, to in ratio to all of the other alcohol and, and words that I can't uh, pronounce. <laughs> I don't even try to because I don't use good. them. Good. If uh, you can't, I know I won't so I won't even go there. <laughs> Um, if it's 20% perfume oil in ratio, then it's the, uh, the toilet, the expensive, expensive perfume. And if it's uh, 2%, then it's cologne. And that's the one you spray, 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 and then an hour or two later, spray, 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 yeah. and an hour or two later, spray, 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 because, you know, it's only 2% perfume, right. and it also has a bunch of alcohol and other things that kind of uh, compromise the aroma uh, less. Mine are sold 100% pure perfume oil. So a little dabble do you all day long. That's, gotcha. the, that's the what so I mint, Will men wear your, your product as well? Oh, I have 250 men's colognes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. And I've helped so, people have helped men create their own. Yes. And we call it cologne because men think of uh, a fragrance for themselves as cologne. Yeah. 
Right. In actuality, it's just, it's pure perfume oil as well. Interesting. So if somebody's listening and they're watching online and, um, and they're thinking, well, I want to do that. How would I create a, a, how would you create a unique smell for somebody who's, who's not, not able to come into your shop? Oh, I do that too. What I do is I talk to them on the phone and the same way as in person that they start talking to me and the oils speak to me. Uh, I talk to them on the phone and as they're talking to me, I pull some oils together. I put together at least four samples and then I mail it to them mm -hmm. and I say, which one, which one do you like the best and try, wear it and uh, try it and wear it for a day and write down your thoughts uh, and, um, you know, and then, and then let me know in four days, which one you liked better. And it, it, and we can also alter that one. It doesn't have to be that exact one. I can also, but once you, once they say, okay, I'd like sample two the best. Okay, great. Then I send them about four variations of sample two. And then they try that and they see mm -hmm. which one is the one that just, that's the one. I don't want someone to say, oh, this is good enough. No, let's find the one. Can always add a little more something or take out uh, an ingredient, what have you. And we work from there. And so of course it does take longer because it's through the mail, but it works and we get it and it, and it ends up happening. So yeah, mm -hmm. I actually have some clients in Texas where I'm from that, <laughs> that, have done exactly that. And then I have locals who are just busy. They travel or they're all around. Uh, and so I, I just ship it over to them and, and they try it out and they let me know. That's how that we do it. So cool. That was so yeah. cool. Hey guys, if you're watching this live or recorded and you want to text in a question, uh, type it in the chat. If you're watching in Facebook, you can uh, you can do that there. But uh, go ahead and ask a question. I'm just, I'm, as we wrap this up, I want to make it available so people can ask a question. Um, but um, AJ, I just, I just, uh, I've learned even more about you today because um, I didn't know about being dropped off at the doorstep of somebody and, uh, and, and that was really cool. And I, I just love the way that you are talking about your life now. And, and I think a lot of times when somebody's gone through the losses that, that you have, um, they don't know that they're ever going to ever feel like they can truly live again, that they can truly enjoy life. And there's that element of time. And I, I know most people that I've talked to, uh, there's even times when they feel guilty about being happy. And, and you and I, I, we both have experienced that. Yes. Um, so, but I just want to tell you how much I um, appreciate you and uh, respect you and, and admire you for, for how you've handled those things. And then this business that you've created uh, so excited for you. So happy for you. Thank you. So cool. Um, uh, Flo, Flo has a question. Well, Flo, go ahead and bring yourself on. Loved listening to you today, AJ. And oh my gosh, I have, I kind of have two questions actually. Okay. Um, just want to give you a virtual hug. Um, just, uh, yes, just, <laughs> Um, I, I know it was painful for you to talk about your son and, um, I thank you for sharing. Um, I can see it's still raw, even after, you know, the time of 10 years. Um, and, um, you know, sorry, just, I know just isn't enough. But what do you feel needs to be done? Um, I kind of try to take notes um, for you to um, not not get over it, but just I mean I know you you talked about having reasons and a mission, but but it seems like something really needs to be done. What do you think that needs to be done? You know, Flo, I'm just not sure what needs to be done. <clears throat> I love that answer. I mean, because it's other, yeah, other than uh, truthful, the 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 things that I you know I, I mentioned doing, what can I do to prevent this from happening to other people? Um, what can I do to to get up every day and and be functional? Um, having uh, goals and missions, um, but also forgiving yourself if you didn't hit your goal that day 
Um, don't don't give up. Don't be too hard on yourself. Um, <clears throat> Bob can probably relate with this. I whenever he said something about do you have guilt whenever you're have when you're happy, and mm -hmm. that's definitely a, a factor. So I always go to what would Tristan want for me, and he definitely would want me to be happy. Yes. He, he would hate for me to stay in bed all day or to be depressed or to be anything negative. He would want me to go on and live in, 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 in his honor. And that is one thing that some people, I've met people who've lost a, a child and they don't want to speak of it at all. And that's, that's their prerogative. And if that's how they live with it, then, then, yeah. then I'll respect that. Mm -hmm. But that shouldn't be, it shouldn't be taboo to be able to talk about. I mean, we can talk about our, how wonderful our dad, like I just talked about my dad. He just, he, he passed in the same year my son did. He passed nine months earlier. So I can talk about him and it's okay. I can talk about this and it's okay. I can talk about my deceased grandparents, my deceased parents. But for some reason, when you talk about a deceased child, people are like, some people, not everybody, but people are like, oh, no, don't, don't, don't speak of it. Don't speak of it. Oh, what, what do you think I'm not going to remember today if you don't speak of it? <laughs> and so you have to <clears throat> learn to speak of it without breaking down, which Bob and I both are, we do every day. <laughs> and, uh, and also just realize that that's, that's not who I am. It, it is something that happened to me. Mm -hmm. It is something that I live with, mm -hmm. but it's not who I am. Um, I am still Tristan's mom and I'm still his daughter's grandmother. And I'm just as much as I am still the mother of my other children, um, I take care of Tristan's grave and his headstone and my other children help with that. I wasn't able to go this last year because <laughs> of COVID. So my son who's in Texas went and made sure he took care of the headstone and cleaned on him and Jerry's headstones. And, and so you just, again, you just find the reasons to continue on. Love that. Thank you. Thank you for being very open and truthful. Um, love that. And I love that about you. Um, but I'm also intrigued about your business. Um, and I know Megan has a question too, because uh, she typed it in, but <clears throat> I had no idea that you did this. So, um, but I have allergies mm -hmm. and sometimes perfumes can set off a sneezing attack. What would you recommend in something for that? <laughs> okay, Flo, that is exactly why I got into this business. Uh, I grew up very sick. My poor mom, bless her heart. She had me at the doctor all the time. I had asthma, allergies, issues, issues, issues. And I grew up thinking I was allergic to perfume. And I would collect the little bottles because they're so cute. And I love little miniature things. And I have a ton of them over there. Little <laughs> bottles and they're still full of perfume. Ages, they're ages old. And that they're, they're still full because when I would sniff it or I would sneeze or when I would put it on, I'd get a little itchy rash. Well, this is the reason you might can see all this. This is all the ingredients in a bottle of perfume. Mm. Tiny little bit of oil and all these other weird ingredients. And that's what I was allergic to. Mm. So. With, with mine, um, uh, pure oil, the oils are natural. And so, I, and I have a, a ton of essential oils as well. And that's how, how I got into this was years ago, starting to use essential oils as remedies and became very holistic. I was on five medications a day uh, over 10 years ago, um, asthma, allergies, uh, all kinds of stuff. And uh, I, I woke up one day and I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I had had the uh, flu and in the hospital and I was just, uh, just so tired. And I was in bed for, for another three days at home. And my two young ones um, who were like 12 and, and eight, nine at the time, kind of were fanning for themselves <laughs> for at home for a few days because I was just so sick. And I woke up and I was like, you know, there's got to be a better way. And I, and I started studying holistic remedies and I became a holistic practitioner. 
and I started um, working in massage and, and body work and energy movement and essential oils and natural products. And from there, I started putting essential oils together to, to wear as, as fragrance mm -hmm. because perfumes like you, I was allergic to. Well, right. then I started learning that that all kinds of fragrance can come in pure oil form. And that's when I, uh, I actually came to this perfumery to buy gifts uh, for some <laughs> friends who had birthdays. And so I wanted, I needed three gifts and I came in and I couldn't decide and I was wanting to buy myself something. And the owner said to me, how about all of them? I'm retiring. And less than a <gasps> later, I owned the place and was running it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well next time i'm down there i am going to go down in there and do a visit but yes i want to do um let's connect afterwards yeah, and let's, absolutely yes let's get this going yes thank you you're welcome all right megan um flo said you had a question so go ahead and bring yourself on megan there she is oh you're muted megan there hello, you go. hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Well, hello, Bob. Good to see you. And uh, AJ, it's not Anita, it's just Anita in uh, your name. But again, I'm so very sorry for your loss, just in heartbreak. Uh, there are no words to it. But I am also a beauty biz girl, and um, I've been manufacturing. Uh, clinical skincare products since 92 and the products are sold to other spas and medical spas and uh, through my website so I've been developing products for years so what is um, first off uh, what is your name I tried to go on Facebook and I you know I don't have enough information and what is the name of your business and I'd love to connect okay wonderful nice to meet you Megan well my name my nickname is AJ because my name is Anita Jane Mm -hmm. That was one thing that my mom pr uh, promised Sally she would do. She promised her two things. One is to always tell me I was adopted, and the other is to not change my name. Mm -hmm. And another little fact on that, um, I have a natural sister uh, that's not, uh, barely a year younger than me, found me last year. <laughs> they connected oh, from my God. son on 21, matched whatever that uh, DNA thing is. Anyhow... <laughs> So I was always glad that that would that, that didn't become a shock to me that I knew uh, I was adopted. And so uh, you can call me AJ or Anita. I answer either way. My Facebook is AJ Anita Jane, and my uh, uh, my little page for the fragrance boutique is just called that the fragrance boutique, and it's it's at fragrance dot pops p o p s for pure oil perfume scents. Okay. And I would love to connect with you. That's, uh, I see wonderful things happens through Bob. Exactly. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, thanks, Megan. I'm glad you were here. My able pleasure. To Hopefully you guys can connect. That'll be a great time. So guys, we're going to wrap this up um, and uh, just let you guys get on with your, your business and your lives today. But uh, I hope what you, what you take away from this are some things that, that, you know, has come at a price that, um, that AJ has paid. And we all pay a price to be who we are today. It's called price paid. It's a, it's a, a pillar that we teach at next level, but you know, she's paid this price and hopefully you never have to pay that same price again. And um, so taking this forward, maybe you can share this with some of your friends, share this, this, what you've learned today, uh, how you, how you're going to take that and move it forward in your life and then allow others to learn from, from what you've heard um, and then connect as well. So um, AJ, I just want to tell you, I love you. I appreciate you, respect you. And I'm so grateful that so many years ago that we were connected. Um, neither one of us knew each other. We didn't know. And we just like showed up. We were told to show up. You, you called and said, let's show up. So we went and had coffee and had a great time. And, and, I, and I truly, truly am grateful for your presence in my life. So thank you for being on today. And, uh, and we'll, we'll stay connected. Thank you, Bob. I love you too. All right, guys, everyone get out there, make it a great week and enjoy your next level. Thanks.